All right, welcome back to Vulcan Deckmasters. Week one, day three. We had a bit of a delay, to say the least. Uh, there were problems with accounts and all sorts of tutorial stuff. We finally got it resolved, and we will, in fact, be playing the match Strife Core vs. Kibler. That was planned, and we thought it was going to be delayed, was going to be undelayed, and we're going to get the games. A big one here as well. Strife Crow been playing amazingly well. Kibler, obviously, a huge Magic the Gathering player uh, and, and doing really well. Uh, what was that uh, a while ago? Challenge Masters, I want to say. And, uh, you know, so glad we'll get to see it uh, if a little bit of a hilarious trip to the match itself. Yeah, Kibler's, uh, Kibler brought Druid, Hunter, Paladin, and I'm pretty happy he brought Pally because it's one of the decks that I think he's played the most. It seems to be a class that he favors very often when you watch him stream. And Strive Crow plays pretty much everything. Um, he's got a huge uh, preference for Warlock. I see him play a lot of that very often. He used to love, I think Grinder Mage is probably one of his favorite decks. Uh, but he brought Mage, but it got banned by Kibler, so he's going to have only Hunter and Warlock to play versus Kibler's Druid and Paladin. Kibler's Hunter being gone from the, uh, the lineup. Absolutely, and right now Strife Crow is sitting at, at 1-0 on the overall. This is Kibler's uh, first match, uh, you know. Uh, Strife Crow, he's been playing like so crazy well lately. Earlier in the week, he was so casually playing that he was having some uh, marinara, it looked like. He was taking dinner and crushing face. I mean, that's a scary thing to be walking in on, uh, especially Kibler. I mean, you know, hopefully he didn't get put off by uh, having to run through some uh, some tutorials. But uh, if anything, that should be a warm-up, right? You know, you crush Hogger out of the way, and then you're pretty much ready to go. Yeah, and then you're good to go. Yeah, exactly. Going through the tutorial is a good practice. I mean, we all know that. I mean, I went from straight tutorial to rank one legend, of course. It's, yeah. You know, a ca casual transition. No problem there. Yeah. It's, it's one straight into the other. Oh, man, Kibler's so handsome. Every time I look over at that picture, I just think, when is the full house cast reunion? So, oh, Specbug's gonna gonna hit us for Strife Crow. So we'll uh, we'll get his mulligans up here in a minute. Yeah, it's. Uh, what, uh, I mean, Kibler, on Kibler's do. side, though, um, the mulligans. I mean, the, the starting hand is not looking too bad. I mean, you'd probably throw a Wrath, but the rest looks pretty fine. I'm curious to see if Kibler brought Ramp or a mid range, fairly aggressive Druid, because this doesn't give away anything. Innervates everywhere, Druid the Claws everywhere, and Wrath is everywhere. So no big giveaways in that hand yet. Yep, swipe been a big part of the deck as well. Uh, getting the board clear done. We'll see what Strife Crow is uh, running here in a minute. He's just going to pass over the first turn, and there we go. He's going to have got to be mid range. Scientist. That has to be a mid range deck. Playing Doctor Boom and so, Hunter, it's definitely not an indication of Face Hunter, unless Strife Crow decided to bring a very weird twist on it, which I heavily doubt he would do at this point. Going to drop that Mad Scientist, send it back over to Kibler. He's going to pull his Drake here early on. He's not getting a lot of the low end. But uh, he's got plenty of time. Iron Beak Owl in for Strife Crow, which will give him some uh, some answers if some uh, some problems come up. And look at Killer God, he's handsome on the on the on the webcam too. There's so too many pretty people in this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> too many. Now, now, looking at this hand from Kibler, you've got many options. My question is, do you silence off the Mad Scientist, or do you keep that for a potential Haunted Creeper, uh, Taunted Up minion? Um, you know, I think it gets buffed. Because you've got Innervate and Coin, which allows for a lot of versatility. I mean, I really like the... Uh, like, imagine turn 3, you can play Drake or Drew to the Claw. Turn 4, you can play the other 5 drop with the Coin. That's a very common transition when you're on the Coin as a Druid. And... Uh, Probably one of the better ways to approach it. Yep, just ends up wiping it off. Creeper going to be thrown down. Dr. Boom, the pull for Kibler. And he's going to sit and think. Do I play that mana. next turn? Or, yeah, I mean, playing Dr. Boom on four mana, when you're going to transition into your five drops right afterwards without needing to curve, is pretty insane. And I wouldn't be surprised if he just opted for that. The only thing that really throws him off here is if Houndmaster gets played. But even in that case, he can play Keeper of the Grove, like the silence of the Keeper. The, yeah, the, he's got the swipe sitting around as well. I mean, he's got, he's got a lot of uh, a lot of answers to a lot of what Strife Crow might be throwing down, and that has certainly given him some pause here. As I mean, it's a big question. Do you sit on it and wait? Do you go ahead and throw it out? Kibler doesn't know. What's he going to do? Oh, the anticipation it grows. Man, he really is. Uh, he's, he's really working. thinking this. You really have he to. He really is. He does not want to jump the gun on it and yeah. regret it later. It's all about not losing that tempo. So he's going to go for the safer option. I can't blame him for that, really. He's going to get an amazing curve anyway into Azure Drake, plus swipe on the following turn, which is going to hit for two if the Drake lives. And there's the Unleash the Hounds that uh, could have been a real problem there. And it's going to just be a piloted Treader instead. It's Kibler goes for the safer look. 
And Harrison I mean, Jones. Oh, Harrison Jones is going to be an amazing card later on. For the time being, not the biggest oh, deal, um, but it's going to come in super handy when he needs to remove that Eagle Hornbow. It'll have at most one charge being used. Gets a second Mad Scientist. Going to throw the silence down on the piloted shredder and make sure that uh, nothing, nothing wonky comes out there, which you know makes me sad because I've just been dreaming of Lore Walker Cho. Every single day I've been watching Hearthstone. Like some of the best games of the past month have been ridiculous Lore Walker Cho games where people just end up in this equilibrium. You, it, Lore Walker Cho, just... like, it, those are fun. It's like the, 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 the inevitable doomsayer from the Powder Shredder. I mean, it rarely ever happens. But when you see it, it's a pretty good time. It's just not super common. Now, Strife is going to play his Shredder for value. Despite it being silenced, he's still going to go for a kill on the Keeper of the Grove. Again, you don't want to lose that value if you can afford it. Uh, if you can afford it, and as a result, the trap is going to send back Brian Kibler's Drew to the Claw. And just going to trade across, swipe now the look. He's going to drop it onto the Mad Scientist, and... Good trigger two traps at once if there's an explosive trap and a freezing trap. And there are, in fact, two traps. So freezing first and then explosive if that is the case. If it's snake trap, though, Kibler not going to get a two for one on that end. And it looks to be snake trap, so Kibler not triggering the explosive. Oh man, surprise. Kill Command come out, he's just gonna go face with his spiders and uh, Strife Curl. Steady shots and sends it back on over to Kibler. Now here's an interesting thought. If Kibler's definitely playing Dr. Boom here and all those Strife Curls Dr. Boom may look appealing, the big drawback of it is that if the Snake Trap is triggered and Kibler has the second swipe, that really doesn't give uh, Strife Curl the value he wants out of Boom. So, he, I mean, he might opt for an Unleash the Hounds play here. He might. There's a chance, slight chance that he does. Pulls his high main, and he's going to go ahead and uh, use his little spider friend to give one, one of those bombs. Take a look at Dr. Boom, and did he drop it? He did indeed. All right, well, that's going to be... this. If this is Snake Trap, which I have to assume it is based on the Explosive Trap not triggering earlier, um, I think Kibler's got his work cut out for him on this turn. Yeah, swipe, got, uh, swipe in the hand for Kibler. Pulls his other piloted shredder, and right now, just sitting and thinking about it, hovers over Savage Roar there for a moment. And you know, I'm actually curious to know, like, what Kibler is thinking about because the follow up the Strike Crow picked up with the high main is really dangerous to Kibler. Like, if you play Swipe here, you're still gonna get blown out in a way. Um, I think Savage Roar and Swipe guarantee a board clear, and you don't lose Doctor Boom. You're guaranteed to wipe this board because Snake Trap is, as I said, you know, likely what's in there. So attacking with the boom bot into Dr. Boom is guaranteeing a board wipe with just the swipe. And there he goes, going to go ahead and trigger the snake trap. Swipe going to come out and Kibler going to get great value <laughs> on that one. Oh man, that must feel good. Oh, the swipe is so yeah. beautiful. After the nine to face, I mean, Strife Crow was oh. looking real comfy oh. there for a second. <laughs> Six damage from this. But these Boombots really nailed it. I mean, just short of dying here for Dr. Boom, taking some damage. 50-50 with that knife killing the 7-1. Oh, man. Is Ooh. he going to get it? And he no! Goes. goes to face. Ah, oh, you can't be too sad about that. <laughs> and that was pretty what crazy. What are you going to do? Oh, man. So do you push for damage here if you're Kibler's position, or do you still try to play the... Uh... Because, yeah. you know, with, with on one health, very often, a knife juggler eventually is just going to kill your Dr. Boom. So you're going to lose it for nothing. Do you want to get something for it and play the long game against the Savannah um, High Main or not? Yeah, it's one of those things. It's, I mean, you, you've got Strife Crow sitting at 17. Seven's got to be looking like a pretty tasty number to knock off there. And uh, oop, I see an, an arrow coming out, but the, uh, that spec lag. There we go. Azure Drake. Going to drop onto the field, which certainly gives Strife Crow something to think about. Let's see where he ends up going with that with that boom. I, I'm with you on that one. He looks like he's going to go to face with it. And just uh, sit back and let Strife Crow make the calls on that. See if he tries to gamble with the juggle or what he's going to do. Innervate going to come out. And what? Let's see yeah, well, a little bit of a, of a tempo play. He's trying to push for phase here at this point. He's got two to the claw. One of them can charge. Um, I wonder if... I mean, I don't think the, the new Druid of the Claw changed his plans, but they might have influenced them. It's just that when you think about the current board, Strife Crow is forced to make trades. Absolutely forced to make trades. Yeah, he definitely can't sit on top of this. I mean, you got, what, 15 showing on the board. He's going to get his Unleash the Hounds out. 
Uh, and then he's just gonna have to go to work. Kibler giving him a little, uh, give him a little nod like, yes, this is within parameters. He's gonna get a juggle though. On to that Dr. Boom. Uh, there's a little bit of help and got some good juggles. Onto the, uh, onto the piloted shredder. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Dun not gonna do Scott much, but the Dr. Boom's down, so... Not too bad. Not too bad. Buy him a little bit of time at the very least, and he's got some good damage on his side as well. Stripe Pro running low. He's looking a low theb. Gonna send the high main in to do some work and then drop low theb. You know, this is gonna be a really sticky position for Kibler, because although he's got, I mean, he's got a total of six damage in hand with Drew to the Claw, my problem with this board at the moment is that he can't play spells to recover even if he had them because of Lothab, and he's probably just gonna die next turn unless he finds something. He's gonna pull an Angel of Lore. Does he, yeah. does he have to heal himself, is what he's wondering, because if you look at Strife Crow's board, he's looking at 9, 10, 16 damage, 21 with Kill Command, and with Unleash and Hero Power, that's more than enough to take down Kibler, so Kibler's got to make a tough call here. What? He's got to make a tough call. And with it showing on the board, you know, he's going to be acutely aware of it, he knows, he's seen one Kill can Command come out, I believe, already, so, you know, he's got to be guessing that second one's, if not in hand, at least lurking somewhere in an ever-dwindling deck. He's going to hover over that Ancient Lore, drop it down, and he's going to go for the heal. No, he's going to go for the draw and hope to oh, find uh, a Wrath, I'm guessing. I'm not too sure, but at this point, does Scrafco has this... Uh, does he have this? He needs 21 damage. He's got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 with Hero Power, and 21 exactly with the Unleash the Hounds, I think. Yep, that, that should be it. Up, but the armor, not going to be enough. enough. Oh man, exact lethal for Strife Crow here. Doing the math. And he's Strife got Crow, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a flourish. He's gonna end the game with a little flourish. I so like he's it. recounting. Well not never mind the recount, just full on unleash. And the charge damage from that hound really important here. Could have been any any other card, I guess, like quick shot, and it would have done it. Oh man. The, those boom bots really were a problem because they left Dr. Boom with one health, leaving it vulnerable to Knife Juggler and the Hounds. So big boom bots there for Strife Crow. Uh, Kibler with the nod, gonna just have to give it over to Strife Crow on that one, man. He, uh, yeah, he got uh, some sick. really nice bombs and then uh, that second turn juggle to yeah, all but get the work done. You do, you do what you can, but when Dr. Boom boom to do what they want, then I guess there's only so much you can do. I mean, RNG, as he said, you will smile, You smile, and you grit your teeth, and you go, well, that's Hearthstone, and then you go to the next one. Scale Stone, heroes of RNG craft. So Kibler, losing with Druid, can go back to it. He's got a Paladin on the back end. Strife Crow has to win against both decks with a Warlock. Again, Warlock, sometimes fairly weak to Paladin, depending on how the, the, bit, you know, the, the Paladin deck is built. Um, but... If he can't beat the Warlock, uh, the Paladin from Kibler, he's going to be out of it. So if Kibler can just seal the games against the Warlock, he should be fine. It's just a Druid versus something that should be a mid-range lock or Malagos Warlock from Strife Crow. Could be a little tricky. Absolutely. He's going to go ahead and uh, mulligan it out. We're going to roll it around. And uh, i got to say, I'm in a close one for Kibler there. Uh, so some solid play, but Strife Crow just, just hitting it where it hurts, man. The RNG... Carrying him through that one. Uh, we'll see if Kibler can mitigate this time. Uh, it's, you know. But there's a wild growth. There's an innervate. Things are looking good. Yep. He just needs to pick up really solid mid game cards. Another innervate is not Perfect. what he's looking for. This nope. is. There is such a thing as too much ramp. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is such a thing as too much ramp. And I think we've just hit that point. Yeah, it feels good when you're sitting on a, on a couple of, of high value cards that you'd love to be able to get on the board a little bit early. But as it is, uh, you know. What's he going to do? He's going to look at him. He's going to say, hey, Sludge Belcher, you're my friend. Tell me what to do. And Sludge Belcher's not, they never have good advice. Those guys, Imp Gang Boss, going to come down for Strife Crow. And I mean, he's, he's got some good stuff in the hand. He's got Malganus there if it makes it that far. Um, oh, that's and an interesting a swipe for, for Kibler. Kibler. Kibler's going to, he's, he's got a really interesting decision line to take here. Because if you innervate, you're overpaying for the Sludge Belcher. But at the same time, what is your choice when you see this come out? Yeah, he needs to get something out there. I mean, it's it's just going to be just so much momentum in Strife Crow's way. And I mean, the way he's pulling, it's like you said, swipe an interesting card. Uh, you know, I'm sure he would much rather have something that's uh, that's going to give him some beef on the board, but it's going to have to be Sludge Belter and uh, send it back over. Haunted Creeper, the pull now for Crow. Strife Crow. I feel weird saying just the last part. I should remember. The Amended Crow, yeah. Well, the you crow. know, he does give Crow fists. 
Are you he the does. crow? <laughs> or the crow. <laughs> we stand watch over the wall. Although this wall is just a void walker. There's really nothing there to... Yeah, it's not a huge wall, but, uh, I mean, it's an ugly one. Well, it's not as ugly as Sludge Belcher, I should say. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? I only recently finally started to understand what the Sludge Belcher was, you know, mumbling. Um, he says, like, thumbs feel funny or something. Thumbs feel funny. I don't know exactly who voiced that, but, mate, um, you can do you think they just, impressions you think they just right. told him to go nuts in the booth. They were just like, say whatever. <laughs> Say whatever, man. We'll, we're gonna we're gonna make it sound weird. Nobody's gonna even know. You know, you know what? Just make sounds. We'll pretend like they're words as soon as we'll we can figure like out something that looks like it's a word. So the guy's a giant like, oozing Ur. corpse monster. It's fine. Yeah. Anything you say is within reason. So Strifecrow here not making a decision yet. Apparently, he's definitely not gonna be playing the knife traveler because he would have done that before. So it's gonna be a void terror turn, making it actually quite uh, quite big here. Leaving the 2 1 for another imp cycle, eating up the free 1 1 and getting a 5 7 out of this. Put some nice size on the terror. And uh, I mean, really took a while there. Yeah, I was with you. I was thinking that knife juggler was going to come down fairly quickly. Savage Roar going to come out for Kibler. And honestly, if he was selling spells to somebody, he'd be rich by now. But uh, you know, as there's it something is, uh, like there's a play to be made with a swipe, but it, I, I think you might want to wait one more turn because the way I'm looking at this is. You could kill the imp and swipe the the five seven, then innervate the wrath, but it's kind of weak to like because you're using three cards to get rid of two that have already done their job pretty much, and then you've got zero cards in hand and nothing but a three one belcher, so yeah. I, he has to play for the long game here. Kibler needs to go for slower plays as bad as they may feel. Yeah, because he's even he's, cycling the wrath. He needs to get something in there. And like you said, Strive Crow, I mean, just sitting on a really nice sort of spot to be right here. He's got good stuff on the board. He's got Defender and Knife Juggler and the Creeper in hand to give him just a little bit of stuff for, for Kibler to have to think about on the board. And Kibler <laughs> keeps drawing just not what he needs right now. Some good stuff situationally, but right now he's just not in those situations. So he's going to wait for turn 6, get himself 6 mana, not to have him to innervate either of those plays, which is obviously the better option. Um, Kibler playing again, the long game, he needs to pick up. Ideally, like a good Dark Trooper or Ancient of Lore here would go a long way to making this a bit more manageable. Strifecrow with just an all-positive trade right there as he drops a Defender of Argus, and he's going to get the other Savage Roar. The RNG gods are not being kind to the man who beat Illidan only moments ago. Well, he's able to, to, to cycle... A little bit here with one damage from Wrath, then swipes the two minions, and that that puts him in an okay spot. It's Let's just that unless it. he picks up something amazing in the next few turns, he's gonna get blown out by Strife Cross Tempo. Yep. Knife Juggler, a lot of a lot of head shaking from Kibler in the past couple of minutes, and and rightly so, as he's gonna get the Knife Juggler and the Creeper out and just go to face and the turn back on over. Strife Cross sitting in a comfortable spot. Thorsan. He's got you know, to innervate the shade. You know what? Go all in on it. And maybe hope for Force of Nature with that double Savage Roar in hand. All you've got to wait for. You can yeah. <laughs> do that double combo on 10. You're good to go. At least he finally got some minions out on the board that are uh, going to be hug worthy there. Going to drop some costs and send it back over. Strife Go going to pull another power overwhelming. Whoa, wait. So with Implosion and the Creeper, he's got a lot of knife hits, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 because he can... That uh, is a whole lot yeah. of them. So he could, uh, yeah, he could cause Kibler some real consternation here. I mean, that's if Strive Crow wants to send it in that direction. <laughs> Certainly it'd be the most fun for us to watch, I think. Anytime we get to watch the juggles happen, uh, everybody has a good time. Strive Crow sitting there doing the math on it, deciding if that's what he wants to do. He's going to power overwhelming it and get the game started. All right, so down goes... Is he, is he really going to kill his own spider to get more triggers? You know what? This is amazing. <laughs> Not only is it going to pop... Kibler. Kibler. <laughs> I kill the shade. Rest in peace, <laughs> so You will be missed. And now Kibler's only out probably is a swipe. Top yeah, Kibler swipe. can't do anything but chuckle at that and nod. I mean, what do you do? And he pulls wild growth. You know, <laughs> and he laughs at the wild growth. <laughs> I have never seen in my life such a worse oh. bad draw for any player <laughs> with any deck ever in a tournament setting. I have never seen this. He um, literally could not take a step <laughs> since turn one. Silver lining, nobody knows what Kibler's running in this Druid deck. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one to this. 
He's, yeah. he's counting it up and just kind of, I mean, the face, the expressions tell it all. And I, I just, how do you, <laughs> what do you do? You do? Just growth on eight just to make a point. Just to yeah, be like, just, hey, here's, the, here's what I have. Like, you just play all your spells and you move on. I was, I was been talking to my lady about this in the past couple days. Why is there not a cry emote when you, when you <laughs> click on your champion? Sometimes that's all you want. It's just to send a little single tear <laughs> down Malfurion's face to let everybody know I'm real sad and it's nobody's so, fault. Kibler here playing the Wild Growth to get 10 mana next turn. Even if he picks up Force of Nature, he still only has 22 damage. Oh, Life Tap could put him. Oh man, he's going to be one off lethal if he top decks Force of Nature. Does he actually does he actually have this rec will have it? 8, 9, 10. He's got 14. Oh man, one off lethal for Kibler if he finds Force of Nature. This would be the most bittersweet top deck. That would be fantastic. Oh, and uh, yeah, because he's just gonna have to send it back over. What's he gonna get? Ancient of Lore. So he'll get a chance to draw into it. No, he has to heal himself. Kibler. It's yep. unfortunately not gonna do anything considering the current state of the board. And Kibler is going to say well played. I mean, with such a dry draw, it's pretty hard to do anything. I mean, you saw Wild Growth, you saw Innervate, it looked good. Then you saw a second Innervate, it looked less good, because that was too much. So he helped for a really high draw. Savage Roar, back to back. Yeah, and then... That Potential, was and then, then Wild Growth again, and then uh, and then Kibler just uh, takes a powder. He's going he's gonna to check out of that one. 2-0 to Stripe Crow. I mean, I, w I have to wonder if Kibler's uh, ability... I mean, you know, he's a card player. He's been playing MTG for the longest time, Magic the Gathering. He's used to swing and variants. Like, do you think this will be marked in his mind as the most unfortunate streak of draws he's ever had, ever? I mean, to I, me, this is just mind-blowing. Yeah, I mean, that was just... I You just kept waiting for anything to come out of there, and it was like, oh, a useful spell in a completely different situation. Oh, if I had this, this would have been super nice. But no, it was just spell, Complete spell, with. spell, nothing to do, nothing to get on there. He finally gets a little bit out with the Shade and Thorisan, and then... And then you juggles. Know, you know, juggles nothing happen. you could do. <laughs> and you know what? Let's uh, let's give style points to Strife Crow for uh, for showing the juggles. I like the play. Of, my my yeah. initial thought was that he was going to play Implosion first, then attack into Thorson with the spider. But that would have risked not spawning perhaps the last two spiders. It might have averaged to the same thing. But the way he played it was either way going to lead to like a massive blowout unless swipe was found. So I mean, it's it's just crazy the way this game turned out. Yeah. What are you going to do? And 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 opportunities till the end there for Kibler, but the draws just weren't going his way. I mean, with the Savage Roar in hand, you got that glimmer in your eye, but. There's nothing you can do when the RNG gods are not on your side, and that was just the case for Kibler in Game 2 there. Strife Crow going to take it 2-0. Goes 2-0 overall in the tournament so far, and is looking like a, a really strong contender. Yeah, well, so we'll uh, we'll be moving on to the next match shortly. It's going to be Trump versus Orange. Uh, Orange did play, I think, at the beginning of last week and lost his uh, first game in the league so far, his first match. He has a chance to beat Trump. Uh, I think Harudra beat Trump on day one. Yep. So again, you know, really uh, some upheavals happening here. New faces, new scores. We'll never know exactly how those people perform until we reach the end of the league. But until then, it seems like they're doing fairly well. Orange versus Trump is going to be coming up. We'll be back. We'll get, we're going to be taking a short break. Uh, and as soon, I mean, it, it'll be really a short break this time. Yeah, hopefully this time it'll be a short break. And while we're on our short break, why don't you guys head on over to squarespace.com slash deckmasters. Check them out. They are the sponsor for this fine Vulcan De Deckmasters tournament. Uh, if you need a website, man, it couldn't be easier. Just head on over there and check it out. And we're going to go to break right now, so we'll be back in just a little bit.